Okay, so I'm Louise and I'm 30 years of age. Um, and I um, grew up in a normal nuclear family and I had my mum and my dad and my sister. She's two years younger than I am. And I guess, you know, I never thought anything um, to be different from that. Um, like every other um, child that I went to school with and played with at brownies and so forth. Um, but I guess a couple of years ago now, when I was 27, I found out that I was stony conceived. So um, my dad wasn't able to conceive children and he found that out and before my parents got married. So um, that time, that revelation was a fairly significant period in our life and for my sister and I, I found out first and I um, found out by a non-family member which was fairly challenging um, and I rang my mum and I said, look, you know, you really need to, um, we need to sit down tonight and you need to tell my sister, you know, I couldn't carry the, that news on my own. Um, so that conversation was pretty hard and um, I guess from that sort of the ripples, um, the ripple effect I guess, um, you know, a fairly significant period of conflict and I think it was just really hard to understand, you know, that the withholding of a secret that was, you know, part of the way in which we'd come into the world which I don't think anyone should be ashamed of. Um, you know, so I think it took um, quite a bit of time for my sister and I to, to come to a point where we could even talk about it ourselves. Um, I guess it's sort of like grief, you know, if something happens within your family or something's not the way you envisaged it to be, that takes time to understand and, and be able to, to talk about that. I guess another added layer for me was that when I was 16, my dad passed away. Um, so I guess in thinking about what this has meant to me, um, not having my dad talk to about this has been fairly significant. Um, I guess, you know, there's a lot of unanswered questions um, and things that I, I just like to be able to tell him that it's okay, but I'm really, you know, despite the quiver in my voice, I feel, um, you know, so blessed that they undertook this procedure to, to have me and to have my sister. Um, so I think, you know, it's a shock and a challenge to your personal identity and, um, yeah, it's the way that you have always perceived yourself to be and the way that you'll be in the future. Um, and I guess another sort of complicating factor if we needed any more was the fact that my sister and I are not from the same donor and that was um, something that was taken out of the hands of my parents, so they didn't have a choice in that. Um, and so I think, you know, that brought up an, another lot of stuff, I guess, for my sister and I. But, um, you know, thinking back over all of this and having some time to reflect, I guess, about three years on now, um, like I said, I'm eternally grateful um, for what they went through and know that it was really hard. Um, I think, you know, the secret is something that, you know, like Ross described, it's a really, I can't imagine how challenging that was for them to hold on to that. But I think, you know, there are many challenging conversations and I work with families and, you know, talk to them about many challenging conversations that you have with your kids over time, you know, in puberty and you have to talk about sex and all these, you know, things and I think it's just, it's one of those conversations, maybe not everyone has to have it, but if that's a part of your life and you're proud of, you know, be proud of the way that um, your kids have come into the world and be able to, to share that with them and um, do that at a time perhaps that, perhaps is not going to be a perfect time, but just give it a go, like you do with many other things. Um, you know, my mum kept saying, oh, I'm, I meant to tell you and... I thought about telling you at this time and then I thought about it another year later and I, I searched for information and I really just wanted to have the answers and maybe there's not the answers, you know, maybe there's still no answers today as many of us sit here. Um, but I guess at the moment I'm not actually sure, I sit in an uncertainty at the moment, I'm not sure whether I want to know who my donor 
kids. You know, I had a beautiful dad and cherished every day the relationship we shared. So I think um, for me, you know, she didn't need, mum didn't need to come to me with an answer. Um, I just, I wanted to know and be able to have an open conversation with her and for her to share what this has meant to her. Um, so I think, you know, maybe I could, you know, suggest that maybe having done that a bit earlier in my life, maybe things, um, the relationship would have been a bit better and perhaps held, um, you know, I think the longer that the secret's held, maybe the more awkward that conversation becomes, you know, I guess just seeing it from my perspective. Um, and I guess the other thing too is it, it's hard, so given, even though I'm in an uncertainty at, or sitting in uncertainty at the moment, not knowing whether I want to find out who my donor is or not, I guess we, um, given that we're born before a certain time, don't have a lot of choices either. So that um, is something that, that we have to live with and um, hopefully, you know, people, young people of the future won't have to, but... Um, you know, that's, I guess, a, a challenge and a talk for another day. But, yeah, thanks for hearing me. Mm -hmm.